Hello, and welcome back to The Art of Reduction. My name is Reeve Andrews, and I'm going to be your barber today. We're actually going to put the straight razor down and not do any haircuts today, but we're going to talk about the importance of hiring great people, and more importantly, hiring the right people. I've been a barber for over 20 years. I've owned a fairly, I'm going to say, a greatly successful barber shop for going on 11 and a half years. And I just want to talk about just more importantly creating a great team and how to just be a great person behind the chair and uh, how scary it is as an owner to actually hire someone. When you fire someone if you have to or they leave or they move on or they spread their wings or whatever the case, you kind of see that coming. You, you, there's a reason why all that unfolded and you were able to kind of in time usher that out how you want. But when a stranger walks in the door to your shop, no matter if you're booth rent or a commission-based shop, there's already an energy usually going on. There's already people working there. There's already a system. There's already great talent. Um, there's all kinds of things already in place when before that person walks in to come to a job interview with you or your hiring manager or what your business partner per se, whatever the case. So there's such a difference between hiring someone and someone leaving the shop whichever way shape or form that is so it's actually harder to hire someone new who we have no clue really anything about them we yes we could check out their instagram yes we could possibly stalk them on facebook or check them out on linkedin which a lot of styles don't have linkedin so it's a really hard to figure out who's walking into your shop you know, to get a job at a station at your, at your shop. So to me, how I look at a business and how I look at my business is I looked at, each, at we were an engine, you know, and each chair was a piston. And we want an engine to run in sync. We want each chair running at a good capacity, you know, healthy, supportive of their bills, of their lifestyle, growth mentality, they're feeling good, family time. All this, a good running engine, each piston should be running healthily. If you, if you work too hard, I know this looks weird on camera probably, but if you work too hard and that piston you know, is gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna break, it's gonna, it's gonna fail, it's gonna get burnt out, it's literally going to break. So you don't wanna work a piston too hard, you wanna work it nicely. And so we're a great running engine right now. When the shop's running good, you have three guys, you have six guys, you have one guy, it doesn't matter. That's running good. You have, people are coming to the shop. So all of a sudden, we need to hire another person because each chair's full. All the stylists are busy. We're happy, but we're turning away clients. Clients can't get in. So we take on another person. Well, very scary to take a new engine part, a person, and apply it to a system that's already working. So that's the hardest part about running a business in my book is hiring and integrating them into an already well working engine. So with that being said, I really think to create a good hire is to already, number one, have a well working engine. One that's, you don't, you're not stressing over if people are wanting to work for you or not. If that's, that would be the worst part. If you needed someone and people are not really wanting to work for you. So if you already have a good team, you guys are running well, people are gonna to wanna to come work there because it's already working out for your team. So already knowing that you're in good position should feel good. And I like the quote, slow to hire, quick to fire. So if that person walks in the door, you know, you want to take the time to, to have a couple meetings with them, you know, get to know them a little bit more. Um, more importantly, have one in the shop. If, if, it's, if you have a coffee shop or a restaurant or somewhere, you could go there and kind of talk to them as well and get a different vibe for them when they're in public, not in public. There's so many different ways a shop could take new clients in. But what we like to do is just, you know, the littlest of things, if your meeting's at, at 6 p.m., you know, what time are they getting there? Are they getting there at 6.15? Are they getting a ride at 6? Maybe they get there at, at 6.55. You know, is it weird if they got there at, or I mean, if, I mean, if they got there at 5.55, is it weird if they came at 5.20? They're way too early. Like, there's so many different signs that you could try to look into hiring someone. I think it's important just to have a you know, a three month rule where, you know, we could just kind of catch your vibe, see how you work. Are you listening to me? If you, if I come in and say, Hey, you know, if you use this technique around this time, you know, are you applying that? Are you really trying to grow? 
there's, there's a lot when I think of trying to hire the right person, it, it takes time and you need to have some patience with people too. You know, maybe they were on time, they're dressed appropriately, they're, they're nice, they're, they're, they're listening, they're asking good questions, but just their haircut isn't cutting it out in the first month, you know, like, but is the service good? Is it getting better than before? You know, there's so many things that you could look at to try to help this new hire out. Or maybe he's just walking in and he's just straight killing it from the get. That's awesome, you know? So like from that person, we learn from those people. We try to gain their knowledge. So, you know, there is so many barbers from old to new who've been doing it forever, who haven't been doing it at all, you know, coming in, asking for jobs. So it's just... I think that's what makes it fun about owning a shop, if, if you ever get to that point, is creating this team um, of, of like-minded, hard-working individuals, creating a fun engine. Because like, look at like, all the sports cars and nice cars, they're so expensive because they have expensive-ass, high-performance engines. So it's like how fun it would be to live life in that engine or in that car, literally, with these people um, working hard next to you. So I think you should be slow to hire them, get to know them a little bit, see if they have any haircuts, have them come cut some hair in front of you um, to see where their baseline is. You know, are they cutting at a 10 being, being on GQ, one being should never hold scissors in their hair, at a, you know, in their hand again, where do they sit? And from there as the owner or the manager or whoever who grows the client or grows the stylist, how much work do I need to put in on this person? And if you have that kind of energy and time, to get them to where they need to be to cut hair in an establishment such as yours, um, it's worth hiring. So just take your time, be a patient person, compromise as an owner, and just really love your staff and try your hardest to support them and grow them, and that should really help you out in the long run. So thank you so much. That's my idea on try to hire the right person for your shop, and we hope you enjoyed the art of reduction. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you.